And she tells Amir al-Mu'amini, Ya Amir al-Mu'amini, my will is that you wash my body after my die at night. Ya Ali, utfunni bil-layl. Ida hada'at al-ayoon. When everyone is sound asleep in the middle of the night, I want you to wash my body. Ya Ali, utfunni laylan la nahara At night and not in the middle of the day. Sirran la jihara And in secrecy, not in public. Wala tushhid This is painful. أحداً ممن ظلمني جنازتي And I don't want the people that oppressed me to take part in my funeral procession. This includes everyone. I don't want anyone except for the very few handful loyal companions that did not oppress us. Fatima al-Zahra died during Maghrib time. Everyone came gathered around her house, waiting to take part in the funeral procession to bury Fatima. Then Amir al-Mu'amini sends Ammar to tell the masses that the funeral is adjourned. They thought the funeral procession will take place the following day. So they go home in the middle of the night. Salman says, as I was praying Salatul Layl, I hear a knock on my door. I open the door. I saw the two little children of Fatima, Hassan and Hussein, while they were crying. They said, Amma, Amma, Salman. He said, what's going on? They said that my father, Amir al-Mu'amin, our father, sends us to tell you that he wants to carry Fatima, to do the Shia to Fatima now in the middle of the night, if you can come with us as well. So they go in the middle of the night when everyone is sound asleep. He carries the casket of Fatima. Hassanun yastashifu dam a Hussein. Hassan is wiping the tears of Hussein. Wajumu al Hussein, Tajri Humama. But they're crying in silence. They can't cry loudly. So they take the casket of Fatima to her burial site. Amir al-Mu'mineen all alone carries Fatima's body. As he was about to lower her corpse inside the grave, he talks to Rasulullah. He says, As-salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Anni wa an ibnatika nazilat bijwarik. Salam be upon you on behalf of your daughter who is being buried next to you was Sari'at al who joined you so quickly only days after your departure from this world. Ya Rasulallah, Ya Rasulallah. You know who we're talking about? Amir al Mu'mineen who was able to confront an entire army, an entire army. Amir al Mu'mineen who had so much patience that he is titled Asbar al-Sabirin, the most patient man that Allah ever created. But he talks to Rasulullah and says, قَلَّ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ عَنْ صَبِيَتِكَ صَبْرِي Ya Rasulullah, I have no patience anymore. وَرَقَّعَنْهَا تَجَلُّدِي I can't tolerate this anymore. أَمَّا حُزْنِي فَزَرْنَادِ I will remain bereaved until the day of judgment. وَأَمَّا لَيْلِي فَمُسَّهَيَادِ I can't sleep at night anymore, Ya Rasulullah. So he heard the Prophet and that's meant mentioned in a hadith. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ سَتِّيمْ عَادَتْ وَدِيعَتِي The amanah that I entrusted you with when you got married came back to me. 
Remember, O oh Ali, when I placed her hand in your hand, I said to you that she is an orphan and she is my amana to you. Remember, Ya Ali? Yes, I do. Thank you very much, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. She came back, she returned to me. As I recall, when I left this world, there was no bruise on her body. Her face wasn't bruised, she wasn't injured. How did she return now? Why is her rib broken? Why is her eye red? Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, oh, tell me. What was Amir al Mu'mineen's response? He said, Ya Rasul Allah, Ahfih al Su'al, Wastakhbir al Hal. Ask her because she didn't tell me what she went through. Sata'lamu an muswaddat al madlima biha, wa ta'lamu an maksurat al dhil'ima biha. She will tell you everything that happened to me and that happened to her. But then after burial, haja bihi al huzn. All of a sudden he was overtaken by grief. He placed his cheek on the soil of her grave and called out nafsi ala zafaratiha mahbusatun. I wish if I die right now, Ya Rasulallah, and join you too. Thank <laughs> you.